Ross will not be here today. Dan Ross will pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, the first item on the agenda will be the approval of the minutes for April 25th, 2022. So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, carries. Six, nothing. Special reports, I'm not seeing any. Audience comments. It's an opportunity for a member of the audience to address council, address council on a non-agenda item for up to five minutes. Any papers on that? Okay, seeing none, moved in the... Unfinished business, there is none there. New business first will be an ordinance authorizing issuance of non electoral debt in an amount not to exceed $11,500,000. So on April 25th, Council took action to appoint RBC as the underwriter for the 2022 bond issue. The express consensus of Council was that the bond issue would be structured to generate $10 million in proceeds. The Pennsylvania Local Government Unit Debt Act requires council to adopt an ordinance setting the parameters for the bond sale on tonight's agenda includes action on a not to exceed parameters ordinance that provides the authority for the underwriter RBC Capital Markets to issue general obligation bonds on behalf of the township. Overseeing that process uh, for the township is our municipal advisor, uh, Jenny Montgomery Scott. And I invited Tim to come tonight because uh, when we have done this in the past, there's a little disconnect between an ordinance that uh, suggests uh, an amount not to exceed $11,500,000 and the fact that we're actually only borrowing $10 million. So, Mr. Friends, I'm going to turn it over to you if you want to explain how that occurs. Sure, I'll be brief. Um, uh, some of you have been through this, some of you have not. Um, just quickly, uh, what we have to do, it's, it's an arcane, that's the right word, okay, arcane law in Pennsylvania that to put together a parameters resolution, you, you have to seek authorization in, in an amount not to exceed because the, the Department of Community Economic Development will approve your bar. So you would think that in total, we could just say 10 million and be done with it. But the way that the law is written is that we have to make sure that we approve a not to exceed in each and every individual maturity all the way out for 30 years. So we have to make sure we have enough bonds in year one, year two, year three. So it's, we can't just say 10 million because the way that the bonds get priced, we have to make sure that we structure it properly so that the payments are nice and level and wrap around your existing payments. So that could potentially take you know 25,000 bonds and put from this maturity up to that maturity. So in total, it doesn't change, but you have to give enough room for this one, if it moves here, if it moves here. So you have to make sure that for every one of those maturities, you have enough room. And uh, you know, if you have a five or 10 year transaction, you put a little bit of cushion in in five or 10 years, it's not that big in terms of bigger than what you expect. But over a 30 year period, we have to make sure we create enough room each and every, in each and every maturity so that we don't exceed principal amount that's being matured in any of those. If we would exceed in any, even if we did 10 million, but if we exceeded in, let's say, 2035, we had 5,000 too much in one year and 5,000 less in another year, we'd be in violation and that bond would not be approved. So we have to create enough room. I think you have a copy, they have a copy of that yes, demo? They, yeah. You saw that in the, in the past, you can see that all of these transactions have been done this way. You can see about how much room we have to leave and then what the, what the final far size of the transaction actually is. So having said all of that, just to simply comply with the regulations in the Commonwealth between both principal amounts and coupons, we put coupons in there at 5% because we know we're not going to get bonds that are priced higher than 5%, not even close. So we don't we have to put a number in that we're not going to exceed. But if you look at the ordinance that you'll be adopting tonight, there are a couple of places, and I referenced that in my memo, there are a couple of places in, that, in the ordinance that say basically notwithstanding 11 and a half million, the bonds will be bank qualified. In order for them to be bank qualified, they can be no more than $10 million. So that's just kind of the nuance of how this works. This is how it's been done each of the last three times. Mm -hmm. um, are there any questions from uh, council regarding this? 
I, I'll also offer, I spoke to Jeff Mills today, our special counsel who's reviewed the ordinance and is satisfied that it meets all the requirements of Pennsylvania law. All right, I'll make a motion that we approve ordinance number 878 authorizing the issuance of non-electoral debt in the amount not to exceed 11500000 Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 6 nothing. So, Mike, can you tell us when these bonds will be in the market for the bonds? He's going to speak. Yeah. Yeah. It has to speak. Very good to see you, everybody. It's been fun to be here this evening. Thank you, Mr. Lauer. Uh, we have everything in place for the bond issue. Uh, the rating has come back, and uh, it is, again, stellar AA plus, which is as high, oh, nearly as high as it can possibly be. Uh, we are going to post the preliminary official statement, which is the sales uh, prospectus, if you will, to, uh, to sell the so to sell the bonds that will post this coming week. And so we, in conjunction uh, with Mr. Friends and J.D. Montgomery Scott, plan to sell the bonds. Uh, we're going to pick a day next week. I think initially we had it uh, for Tuesday. We're targeting Tuesday. We're targeting Tuesday, which would be a week from tomorrow. At that point, the rates will be locked in. We would then move to a closing about 30 days later. And then that's, that's when the money goes into the account of the townships. Since this has been a very volatile uh, 10 days, at least in the market, what has that done to the prospectus of the interest rate of these bonds? Interest rates have, well, you probably watched the 10 year treasury, and it's been up, down, up, down. Tim and I were talking about it on the way in today. Even, even today, the 10 year treasury. Uh, Rates were rates were actually down, but the uh, tax exempt rates don't move as They're they don't have as higher high high and high and low as lows. Um, rates were a couple basis points actually higher today, despite what the treasury did. So all in all, the, the rates are the rates are a little bit higher, uh, depending on your perspective when you ask when you're asking the question comparatively to if it's last week, probably maybe not quite a tenth of a percent. Um, if it was last month, it's probably a few more than that. Um, you know, rates hit the all-time low in August of uh, 2020. It, yeah. That was back you know, as low as 1957. So it does feel like rates have come up dramatically since then. But we're not really too far off of where rates are back in 2019. So from an historical perspective, we're still at a pretty low level of interest rates. It just feels like they've gone up. And I'm talking about the tax exempt market, which is what you borrow. It's, it feels like rates are, are up significantly because rates were so low over the last 18 months. Thank you. Uh, no, other than uh, we continue to say that we'll be, we will remain flexible. Uh, Mike and I were talking on the way in. Uh, we'll talk again on Friday, and we'll talk on Monday um, to see where the markets are. Um, if we feel that, you know, if RBC feels comfortable that there are buyers, um, if we feel that the tone of, mar of the market is good, um, by approving this ordinance this evening, that doesn't lock you into a sale date. Obviously, we have to target one, and we've targeted the next Tuesday, and if all things go well, and if the market seems receptive, we'll go ahead and sell those bonds and close and settle on June 15th. Um, if for some reason, um, you know, in, in discussing with RBC's uh, underwriting desk and their sales force, if they say, yeah, Tuesday, for whatever reason, um, you know, there's something happens in the, you know, in the Ukraine or you know, whatever it might be, something happens with the Supreme Court, um, and all of a sudden the market seems uh, unsure of itself, we can just choose not to enter the market, and we can kind of just play it by ear until we feel that it's comfortable to do so. And because we have the authorization to do so, we can just, on a day or two's notice, jump right in. But again, we're targeting Tuesday, all things being equal. All right. Thank you. Yeah. A little bit of the anxiety and all of it, but we're keeping an eye on it. We'll be talking, so. Gentlemen, thank you. All right. Thank you all. Okay.
Next item will be a resolution authorizing Peter Stubbs to participate in the HGAC by cooperative purchasing program. Yeah, actually, the next two items are, are linked together. Participation in this program and um, uh, buying a remote control mower uh, through that program. Um, you know, throughout our parks, there are many steep slope areas that require mowing, and regardless of the steepness, each of these slopes are currently mowed with an operator on board. The 2022 budget includes an appropriation of $60,000 for the purchase of a remote control steep slope mower. Um, the uh, Public Works Department uh, is recommending the purchase of the mower that you see here. Um, this mower um, was um, demonstrated um, uh, out at the rec center and is capable of mowing uh, up to 50 degree slopes. Um, the, as council is aware, we utilize a variety of, of cooperative purchasing programs uh, to acquire uh, equipment, including co-stars and the Shaycock Purchasing Alliance and Sourcewell and the Keystone Cooperative Purchase Alliance. But this piece of equipment is not available uh, through those cooperative purchasing programs. The manufacturers point us, point us in the direction of uh, HGAC by Cooperative Purchasing Program, which is a national cooperative purchasing program administered by a council of governments of the Houston Galveston area. And it's, it's uh, been in existence for over 40 years and has municipalities across the United States who participated in it. Um, I've asked the solicitor to review the, their cooperative purchasing program to find out whether or not it complies with the provisions of the Pennsylvania Procurement uh, code and Mr. Smith has determined that it that it does, and so it, it's my recommendation that uh, council um, enact a uh, resolution uh, to authorize participation in the program. And if uh, assuming that that passes, that we award a contract for fifty-seven thousand nine hundred fifty dollars, and that's to MTech. Uh, it says in Bank Escape on there the actual vendor and bank equipment, but uh, it's actually MTech Company. And, and one other thing, and I do apologize, I missed this. Uh, there is a small, there's a freight charge on this. It's actually fifty-eight thousand nine hundred and fifty dollars. So. Uh, I have a couple questions before we like take up the sure. motion. Yep. Um, I mean, is this a case where like the tail's wagging the dog? I mean, none of these other programs that we participate in have anything that's comparable to that. It, is it, or maybe it's cheaper. And I'm, and I, I mean, there's no detail why they pick this one over any other one. I don't even know if there was any other ones that were available through these other programs. And, and I don't think that we should be making decisions about purchases like this. Uh, and, and wasting the solicitor's time unless we know, I, I want to know why. I mean, what makes this so special, A? B, you know, there's a shipping charge. I mean, can we get this thing serviced here? Do they have a dealer here? Mm -hmm. What if it breaks? Well, it, what it has, in, in terms of its motor, it's actually a Kawasaki motor on it. So yes, that can be serviced here. In terms of the, the, the mowing deck and that, it's a Gravely deck. So my guess is that you can get that serviced here as well. Um, but, but what's driving this as opposed to were there other options that were available? You know, what it, were the it, prices? And I, asked that same, and I asked that same question, Mr. Curry. and when they looked, they could not find an equivalent mower to this that, that permitted um, being able to do uh, slopes as steep as this. Um, so Let me ask you, Paul, if, if the slopes are so steep that they require something like that to cut them, are they even usable? Do they need to be moved? Can we just turn them into a pollinator? Uh, well, see, and, and I guess that's the question, you know, what I'm hearing from council is that we, we want the parks um, to be to be groomed as opposed to what we see like in the, in the fields that are surrounding the, the high school. And so therefore, they, those slopes need to be mowed. The other thing is, even in you know places like uh, Druid Drive, where we we have to um, uh, mow islands, they're extremely steep. And so, I can have the Public Works Department come here and tell you why this mower over some other. But I do believe that we need to do something with uh, providing a way to do steep slopes safely. Well, 
I mean, we're not the only township in Western Pennsylvania with a steep slope, but some of it's Upper St. Clair above the park. Well, what, what, and who has a number of steep slopes is North Turbane, and what they're using there is their vent tracks with a person on it, and I, I think that's, well, that's a challenge. Well, I don't think that that's a good idea. No. You're just tipping over something, that's probably it, and, the, and it's not been recent, but we have rolled a tractor on a steep slope. Paul, what does the school district use? Uh, they don't use anything. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't, I don't no. know that they have these kind of slopes to maintain, but I, I would have to well, check. Well, they do now. Right? Hey, they're going to want to borrow our ventures. Right. Yeah. Well, is that something we should be looking at a joint purchase? With? Exactly. We, we can talk to them about that. I mean, that's a possibility. Maybe because we've talked about you know the aesthetics of what we want Rolling Hills Park to look like and the adjacent high school, so that might be something an opportunity we have to, to work with the school district. And my other question was, what type of warranty does this have? You know, I don't know that off the top of my head, Mr. Clay. What's the wheelbase? I mean, the base. It's a 52-inch mowing deck, so it's like a zero-turn mower. It's like a tank. And this would just be operated by one public works employee holding a remote control. Yes. Yes. How long does it take to come in? I mean, if we approve this, do they get it next week, or is this a month? Uh, actually, I I think this um, when we had this demonstrated, they had had uh, these in stock. Well, I don't think there's any question we need it. I mean, I agree with Tommy's point that maybe the school district would want to share in it. I concern those if we ask them, it may be another, we may pass another mowing season. No, 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 no. I think we have to make this purchase. So, so I'll make a motion that we authorize Peters Township to participate in the HGAC by cooperative purchasing program and that we award the contract under the HBAC by cooperative purchasing program to MTech Company for 58950 Yes. Second. Okay, motion a second. I just would like to reaffirm that there is no cost in joining this particular co op. No cost. No. And Your motion is just to join the co op. And to approve the project. And to approve the and project. Doing right. Right. Once. Gotcha. All right, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? Mr. Williams, for the second. He was saying there's no cost to join the co op. Because yeah. some of them are. Right. And the annual indebt indebtedness, to right? Yeah, but this one is not. All right. Yeah. Okay. Um, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed. Okay. That carries. Paul, so going forward, when we have something like this, I, I think we need that information. Okay. You know what it is, how long it is, what's the warranty, can it get serviced here? I mean, you know, but I mean, we need it, and it's under the budget, so. Uh, I think it was a smart move to do. Okay. Uh, item D, ordinance amending uh, Peter Sanchez Code of Ordinances, Chapter 440 zone. So um, at their March 10th meeting, uh, the Peters Township Planning Commission reviews the proposed changes to the Peters Township Zoning Ordinance and recommended the, them for approval. On April 25th, Peters Township Council held a public hearing for the purpose of obtaining input from interested parties regarding the proposed changes. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Ed to go through what those changes are. Okay. Um, the there's. Two changes that affect the MA1 zoning district, and if we could just put that map up real quick. That MA is the circle, MA1 is the circled area of Peters. That would be the southern end of Route 19 from approximately McDowell Lane south. That, that area is zoned MA1. The MA1 changes are that we are recommending that this uh, 36 unit per structure be stricken from the ordinance. Um, we talked about why we want that out of there. Uh, we have an, an, a few developments of that type in Peters, and we feel that the trend moving forward is to have more of, more units in one structure. The other amendment to the MA1 is that we are reducing the maximum square footage of building that can be built on, on any site in the MA1 zone by reducing the floor area ratio from 1 to 0.85. Um, the third 
uh, amendment affects any district where multifamily development is permitted, and that is to remove the requirement that at least 50% of all parking spaces for a multifamily development be roofed and enclosed on three sides. We, we feel that that's not something that we need to dictate um, to a developer that would, uh, would want to propose a multifamily development in Peters. Um, again, we have examples of those types of structures in Peters. They're not very sightly right now to have uh, like a carport outside of a multifamily development. We have it at Carriage Hill and we have it at an apartment complex on West McMurray Road. Um, so the, these are changes that um, would affect the MA1, and also the parking change would affect any zoning district in Peters that would allow for multifamily development. And there are a number of districts within Peters that will allow for multifamily development. So uh, what's the maximum that you can have in, in MA1? So this, we're, going, we're getting rid of 36 units per structure. So what's, what's the max that they could have? There is not a maximum limit on density in, a, in the MA1 zoning district. It, it's, what, it's governed by floor area ratio, parking, and lot, uh, what the there's, lot. There, is there, there's a uh, height. There's a height limit. Is it still three stories? Well, you can, it's three stories, and you can go four stories with, as a conditional use. And a fifth if it's a basement. There's no fifth. <laughs> There's no fifth. Well, it's basement, four. When it is revealed to the outside, well, on the low side of the property becomes fifth floor. You know that. I mean, if, if the concern is in this district, I don't think you're going to see that because you don't have the steep, you know, you don't have the slope like no. you had over here at Waters. What Mr. Councilman Lewis is referring to in our Ooh. definition of story, it, it doesn't count as a story if only part of the garage subsurface parking is exposed um, so that does not change so three simple fairly straightforward amendments affecting the MA1 and multifamily parking these are all or not we can't pick and choose which ones we want um, I don't think I don't think you could amend this ordinance at this meeting. You could direct us to come back, but I think you might have to go through the public hearing process. Normally, any zoning ordinance, we're going to have to advertise yeah. in the public hearing. Okay. And I asked Mark, do we, and I can't recall in this district, do we have any minimum square footage requirement per you know, unit size if you were to put? No, there, there's no limit. No. Or on unit size? I was saying, Mark, I know in the city of Pittsburgh, some of their areas, um, like Shadyside, I think it's like 1,800 square foot minimum, so they don't cram in smaller units, um, more for probably to keep out dorm style housing, but nonetheless, that drives the development yeah. too. I don't think that's, yeah. I don't, I don't know, know that yet. you need that here, but yeah, I, I guess they raise your size, but I don't think that's an issue. About how that, what that max would be, but that's the only other time I've seen it. Um, skinny down it's just by the square footage of the unit and we only have one ma1 right you can put up the map area that is our only area in peters that is zoned ma1 those other areas that you see purple throughout the screen there those are those are ma2 those have totally different rules there is a max of 24 per unit in that zoning district. We're, we're not proposing as part of this ordinance to change that. And, and those areas are more closely, uh, they're closer to residential areas, so you don't want something that we, we would allow in an MA1 to be allowed in the MA2 area. Are, are we going to run follow any kind of spot zoning issues? Because we got one issue, we got one area that we're changing because some developer came in and wants to do it that way. Well, I don't think so because you're, you're talking about the entire zoning district. You're not talking about a portion of the zoning district, and that zoning district is fairly large. Okay. 
make a motion to adopt ordinance number 879, amending Peter Township Code of Ordinance Chapter 440. Second. Okay, motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right. We don't have the development that we're going to ultimately see to take consideration to it, but from what was proposed, I think it is entirely too much for the parcel. So I continue to be an A. Based on the comments from the last meeting that we discussed this and the number of council people that are here right now, we were all confident on this. Sure. Ms. Shannon? Yeah, your name. For this development. Yeah. For uh, for this change or this change. Um, yeah. Mr. Lewis? Nay. Mr. Prosco? Yeah. Mr. Kozer? Aye. Mr. Arcari? Nay. Mr. Stagel? Nay. So we're tied three three. That means it fails. It fails, yeah. Item E, resolution amending the fee schedule for these tennis courts and pickleball ball courts. So, um, in the past few months, um, uh, Mr. Schuster uh, has served as the Peters Township Tennis Center Manager, and we've made, some, I believe, some real progress in terms of turning that around and resolving some issues. One of the things that Mr. Schuster points out is that you have a lot of uh, people who have been at that tennis center for quite some time. And um, and because we have a membership model, it it rewards those people. Uh, but what it does is serve as a deterrent for new people who want to stop in and try uh, tennis. Uh, it's also that he points out that. Mount Lebanon and Upper St. Clair choose not to use a membership program, but rather um, uh, charge the same court fee. So what he is proposing, what uh, Ms. Harmel agrees with, is that we change, the, the, we drop the membership structure and um, we uh, set an hourly rate that mimics that which our neighbors are, are, are setting, So, which would be $16 an hour for outdoor play. And then in the, in the um, winter time, what he's suggesting is that you give a discount for people who sign up for permanent times, as opposed to people who have memberships, and you re in, and that fee would be twenty eight dollars versus thirty two all dollars at prime time hours. The other thing is we those courts are marked for pickleball. Uh, we really don't in our fee structure have a, a fee for pickleball, and what he's suggesting is eight dollars an hour. And the way it gets to that is that a pickleball a court is actually half of a normal tennis court. So in essence, it's half of that $16 is how he's getting to that. So, so it's my recommendation that council adopt resolution 5222 amending the fee schedule associated with the tennis court. So moved. Court. Second. Okay, motion and second for further discussion. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries six nothing. Item six, Mr. President. Mr. Payroll. Chairman, I reviewed the payroll and bills I found them to be in order. I knew they'd be approved and submitted. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries six nothing. Correspondence, I'm not seeing anything. Minutes, is there anything we want to discuss in the minutes? Uh, I've read that too long ago. Miscellaneous. Um, I just had a couple of things I wanted to go over. Um, you know, the, uh, one of the detectives in the uh, police department um, participates in federal investigations, and as a result of that, from time to time, the township uh, receives funds through the Equitable Share Fund program. This is where um, assets have been have been seized, and, and uh, participating jurisdictions receive some of those funds. We are in receipt of some of those funds right now, and um, what I would propose we would be doing going forward is incorporating those into the budget discussions and allocating those once we receive those. Um, right now, um, the chief would like to complete 
the training room, the old community room, the conversion there, and would like to be able to use some of those funds you know, for purchase of audiovisual equipment and some improvements in the room. What I was hoping is that uh, council would allow me the uh, opportunity to uh, issue purchase orders for that, that equipment. And when we have a budget amendment this, uh, this fall, that we would incorporate that into the budget amendment. How much money are we getting? How much money sits there right now? About $38,000. And we get this from forfeitures through the federal government? Yeah. Yes. And then we, we don't have any policy that in the past what we did with this money? Well, the uh, federal government regulates what you can use this money for. It's, um, although it's, it's, from my perspective, it's fairly broad. What I think you want to do, and that's why I say eventually, um, you know, what I have discussed with the chief is whatever we have sitting in the pot when, when it comes around time to discuss the budget is when we ought to be looking at this going forward. Um, what are the restrictions? Um, Can we spend them on a fire department? No. It has to no. be in the police department. Can't replace ongoing um, uh, salaries or can't do major capital uh, improvements. It's about vehicle purchases. I, We're upgrading the vehicle. I, I'm going to say I depends on. I think there is some flexibility depending on how creative we get with regard to the vehicles. Mm -hmm. Radios or anything like that. Yeah. Yeah, and, and again, I think it depends on how creative you get with this. Yeah. But to give you some idea of, of we received this money recently, these were for asset forfeiture claims we filed back in late 2019. So that's, I mean, the we, we filed some claims earlier this year. I would be shocked if we see anything from that until 2023. So that, that it kind of comes in intermittently, depending on when Detective Walker is working on a case, when we file the claims, and when it's processed by the federal government. So hence the reason for Mr. Lauer's recommendation. Need a motion for this? Thing? No, uh, I don't. Just if I have a consensus of counsel that we can proceed in that manner. I'm fine. That's fine. Um, in the dockets uh, is a list of the uh, garbage liens that are outstanding. Um, th those liens have just recently been filed. That's uh, a total of $37,000. Yep. That is. Our neighbors have accumulated. And as I have said before, is that when people choose not to pay, everybody else pays a little more. Um, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about is... Um, you know, we have uh, the newspaper. This is the intersection of Valley Brook and Bebop Road, and of course the uh, roundabout will be going in there. There are three homes there that are circled that are without water, and um, you're kidding. Yeah, well, you got to remember, you used to have the uh, concrete culvert there, which was an impediment to, to doing this. So, as this shows that. Um, that purple line is the extension that is required to get water to water available, at least to these three homes. We were working with the water company on this, and I was left with the impression that, uh, as a result of the work with the roundabout, that they would actually be doing this extension on their own. What we have now received uh, is information telling us that the total cost is 135,000. And if the three customers would um, connect, and I don't think one of them will because he's so far away from there, um, that would reduce the cost by uh, $54,000, leaving a price tag of $81,000 to bring water to three homes. I can't imagine the people there can afford that. I'm not sure from a matter of good public policy that it makes sense for the township to spend that kind of money to bring water to three homes. Okay. But I can tell you, these people, particularly the people on the right-hand side here, have been after this for quite some time. So we have a meeting with the water company because we've, we've raised, raised the question about this. I can tell you, these two people believe that they're going to get water, so we might be meeting with them to explain to them. I can't comprehend how the cost is that high. 
They have a well. They have yes. Well water. All, 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 I think all three of them have wells. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. They have septic? Or yeah, no, they have, they have uh, uh, on-lot systems, too. Yeah. Not a, not a good thing. Yeah. You know, and the shame of it no is, way. you know, Rebecca Drive isn't that far away from here. And, and uh, well, I guess maybe the other slide's better. That, where that loop is on the right-hand side, those people all have water and sewers. Mm-hmm. So you can run it up from Berkeley. And they're, they're not... If they ever develop that commercial piece across, they're going to bring water from the other direction. No, there is water up oh, that there way. Water. Yeah, okay. there is water yeah, up that way. Yeah. Yeah. The names and amounts? Well, uh, it's a matter of public record. Yeah. Yeah, how much would it question? How much would it cost us to do that? Probably a lot, to be honest well, with you. But they can put them on the website. Yeah. Well, you're trying, you're trying to get people to wear the scarlet letter. Shame, shame. It's a New well, England task. <laughs> to shun people. That's right. <laughs> well, put the one thing that we up. do on a regular basis, uh, you know, they'll file those liens and then they'll they'll begin the process of executing them. Do that. Put them on the bulletin board. The giant eagle. Don't those liens carry interest? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, that. Oh, yeah. You want to pay your garbage bill. The cost by the time it gets lean, whatever you owed in the in the garbage bill, it's now been doubled or tripled. Well, six percent on the lien. Oh, but the, the fees associated with following that lien are enormous. But the question becomes: you look at some of these numbers. You have some people that owe twelve hundred dollars, eight hundred dollars. I mean, how many years haven't they paid? You know, because even it's a long time. That's what I mean. I mean, because it's what seventy-one dollars a quarter, right? right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Two hundred eighty. Yeah. Yeah. What? Two hundred eighty-four dollars a year. So you have some people have, you know, that. I mean, and that's only been that rate for a year. So you know, some people haven't paid four or five years. How many notices do these people get to? Lots. Lots of notices. They're certified notices. Cert- shortly, they'll have a sheriff putting something on their house. If it's up to like a thousand, how many months is that? I'm just curious. It's a, it's, well, it's, it's it's years. 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 I think like four years. It'll be four years. Four yeah. years would get you a thousand bucks. Now, but, I mean, the rate's only been seventy-one for what a year now. One year. year yeah. For it's so. the highest. I mean, do we have a do we have a rule of thumb where we actually lean them at a certain point? Um, we. We lean them, and I'd have to go back and get the number off of George, but we lean them at a, a, a few hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, I saw 400 here. I mean, I know some of these names, and I guess oh, yeah. you probably all know some. Mm-hmm. I'm sure there's some oversight in there. No. no, there is no oversight in this. You, you receive too many notices. Maybe the newspaper will ponder our discussion as to itemizing and explaining the amounts to intimidate the residents out there to, to get some payments in. But uh, Yeah, Ryan, why don't you look at, just for curiosity, how much it would cost to publish this in the Observer sure. or the Almanac? Yeah. Sure. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm sure it's going to come back like several thousand dollars, well, I would guess, because it all the I think, I think we should just leave it alone, and then the, their punishment's going to be when they have to pay all the fees and costs oh, and yeah. interest. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Of course, a lot of times we don't, we don't get paid until the house sells. Well, oh, so no. For we... example, where the house sold, the guy still didn't end up paying himself with sort a of cash sale or something. <laughs> no, the, no, that's, they will, that's a number one. They will execute on this. Yeah. That's all I have. All right. Anything for the next agenda? Okay. That being the case, we'll adjourn.